get hyped up for the new Everfest Carnival, let's create our own cards. Hi friends, welcome back to Nearly Same Games. I'm Neil, and today we're taking a look at the Everfest Carnival. Now, over at Kitchen Table TCG, they decided to have a contest where you get to, where you create your own cards and you give it the hashtag Fab Everfest to generate some hype over the new Everfest Carnival set that's coming out in February. So I thought I'd play along and create a new hero. This is Rascuro, and uh, he is a light and shadow cleric hero. Uh, his, he starts at 20 health, uh, as this is the young hero, and uh, four intellect, and he has an ability that is a once per turn action Banish a card from your soul. If it is a light card, target player gains two, two health. If it is a shadow card, deal two arcane damage to target player. Go again. Now, the, the way I started out with this hero was I wanted to play with, uh, like, the dual abilities that, like, old him has. And I originally started thinking of him as a light hero, but uh, I wanted to kind of bring in something extra. And I like the idea of playing with uh, using both sides of light and shadow as part of his theme. Uh, now, he is built to be uh, useful in PvE. That is specifically why he says target player gains two health. So uh, he has the ability to heal others with him. And uh, I thought that was important. Now, uh, his name, Roscuro, comes from the Italian that is uh, Chiar Roscuro, I believe is how it's pronounced, uh, and that is the treatment of light and shadow in painting. And I thought that was kind of fitting uh, as he is a, a light and shadow hero. Uh, now, he originally came from Volcor, uh, but he kind of escaped that life and found himself in Solana, where he studied the light arts and was able to kind of combine his powers uh, to be what he is today. Uh, now behind him we see uh, an angel depicted in shadow and a demon uh, that is made from the light. And that is kind of uh, the symbolism of him being kind of stuck in the middle uh, of that struggle and kind of using the power of both of those uh, to his advantage. Uh, the demon came from uh, the Lunar Tide Plunderer card and the angel was from uh, the Ray of Hope card. Um, now, we have the hero and what's the hero uh, without him having a weapon? So let's take a look at uh, the weapon I also built here for him, which is the Staff of Life and Death. Uh, and its ability is, it's a, a cleric weapon, two-handed staff, and its ability is once per turn action, pay two resources, put a card from your hand into your hero's soul, go again. Um, now, Oscuro doesn't have uh, all of the uh, illusionist cards or warrior light warrior cards that would allow him to put things into his soul. So uh, his weapon is just going to do it directly. But that also doesn't have any direct uh, attacks for it. So uh, the idea here is that we can constantly fill our soul and keep working towards uh, either gaining life or um, dealing out arcane damage. Uh, but this also kind of gives us a little bit of an engine that we can use. Uh, first off, uh, it turns on Vestige of Soul easily. This is, uh, aside from Genesis, one of the best ways to turn on your Vestige. Uh, but it's going to cost you two cards to do it. So you're going to have to pay for the ability, and then you're going to have to actually put the card in soul, and then you're going to have to have a light card to use to gain the extra resource from it. Um, so it's not entirely free, but uh, it, it can be useful. Um, there is uh, the ability to use Tome of Divinity. Uh, if you have that and blue light cards, you can... Uh, play Tome of Divinity with the, uh, and, and gain card advantage from that, um, which, which would be helpful. Uh, this also lets you cycle through some shadow cards. Uh, so 
If, for instance, you have a ghostly visit, you can pay to put that ghostly visit in your soul. You can banish that card from your soul to, to send two arcane damage at your opponent, and then you can immediately play that card from banish, and it ends up going into your graveyard. Uh, so that's uh, a nice cycle that, can, that you can play. It does a good amount of damage split across multiple attacks. Um, it, it does need some amount of setup, though. None of that is... Uh, you have to have the right cards to do that. I don't think it's an overpowered thing. And I, I don't expect this character to be overpowered. I, I expect this character to be uh, more play more of a support role, especially in a party. He can throw out some attacks, um, but also use uh, big defensive cards um, like Soul Shield. Um, Soul Shield has the advantage of going to his soul afterwards. And he... He really plays on that, that line of um, really getting the maximizing the use out of your cards, being able to pitch a card and then put a card into your soul and then banish it for an effect and then play it again for an effect. Or in the light side, it is uh, playing those cards, uh, pot potentially have uh, an attack like Illuminate. If it hits, it goes into your soul, and then from there you can use that to banish it and gain the one life from it. Uh, so that's what he is mostly focused on is, is being having very good efficient use of his cards and uh, potentially using a, a lot of his cards twice for two different purposes. Um, and, uh, and, and that's kind of the principle of him. Uh, again, designed more for a PvE kind of setting we're fighting a monster, we're trying to keep everybody healed, uh, let me focus on healing this round, or let me focus on uh, trying to do more damage this round uh, as much as I can, and kind of flipping between those, those two uh, abilities. Uh, so let's take a look and see what uh, a Blitz deck for Rescuro might look like. All right, so let's take a look at what a deck might look, at, look like for this new hero. Uh, to start off with, we're going to have some uh, light attacks that we're going to be using, uh, Rising Solar Tide and Illuminate. Uh, this costs 1, this costs 0, this attacks for 5, this attacks for 4. They both block for 3, though, which is important. And if either of these hits, uh, they go into your hero's soul. So we get good reuse out of those. Uh, Shadow Puppetry is, a, is an excellent action that gives our next attack plus one and go again, uh, which will be uh, useful in places that we can do it. Then we get into our recycling area. Uh, Howl from Beyond, Ghostly Visit, and Void Wraith can all be played from your Banish Zone, which means that we can uh, use our action, send some arcane damage out of them, and then recycle them immediately, uh, avoiding all the blood debt problems with that. And then we have our Lunar Tide Plunderer Red there, which is just a, a large uh, seven power attack that we can send out at our opponent. Uh, we have uh, a couple of Sigil Solaces to gain some life. We are a cleric after all, so having an instant ability to do that. Uh, remember, we're focused on being in uh, a party, and so our main concern is not necessarily damage. Uh, we want to be able to use our abilities. We want to be able to heal our other players as needed or ourselves. So that's what we're going to be looking to do and throw a little bit of damage at our opponent. Uh, next thing we need to do is be able to tank a lot of damage. And so uh, we're going to use both Soul Shield and Guardian of the Shadow Realms to uh, give ourselves some big defense reactions. Soul Shield, of course, <coughs> puts itself in soul after... The combat chain closes in Guardians of the Shadow Realm. We can cycle this and then pay two to get it back to our hands um, from Banish Zone. So we can do all that. Uh, Soul Food is going to be an excellent card for us. There doesn't seem to be, if we're in a multi-party situation, being able to drop our hand into our soul just fine for us. We, we don't want our generics in there, but anything else is uh, pretty much fair game. 
and uh, that, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad deal for us. Uh, Celestial Cataclysm, very good for us. Uh, we, could, we should be able to get three cards and keep them in soul and uh, be able to fire that off pretty easily. Uh, Tome of Divinity is excellent because uh, one of our, our main equipments is going to be the Vestige of Soul. So that gives us uh, an easy way to uh, pay for that. We can put a card into Soul pretty easily. Uh, we just need to make sure that we pitch a light card in order to get the added bonus of that. And that changes some of our decisions down in the blues here. Uh, so we have uh, the blue versions of Rising Solar Tide and Illuminate. Uh, if we need to throw them at our opponent, we can, but uh, blue power is good. Uh, Mutated Mass, uh, another card that we can cycle through, throw some arcane damage at our opponent, and then potentially throw it at, at them again. This costs one, so we could potentially uh, pay for our weapon ability to put it into soul, take it out of soul to do, do two arcane damage, and then pay for it with a different card to uh, throw it at our, our opponent, uh, and that could be uh, easily a four power attack. Uh, Seek Enlightenment, very similar to Howl from Beyond, um, but allows us to uh, have another light card in blue. And then we have Ghostly Visit and Void Wraith. Uh, again, excellent cards to cycle through, even if they're light damage. We can throw them at our opponent uh, pretty easily. And uh, a couple of energy potions to fill out the list. For our equipment, uh, for our chess piece, we can either run uh, Carrion Husk or Vestige of Soul, depending on our matchup. Uh, generally, I think Vestige of Soul is going to be better. We're going to be putting things into our soul probably almost every turn, so we'll be turning it on immediately and uh, able to get the usage, uh, the bonus uh, resource out of that each turn, uh, provided that we have a light card to pitch. Uh, on the other hand, Carrying of Husk is, is a very powerful piece of equipment and uh, could be very good for us. Uh, the only difficulty is that it has blood debt and if we need to banish it, uh, we will have to deal with that blood debt for the rest of the game. Uh, for a headpiece, Halo of Illumination is probably our best bet. Uh, being able to uh, pop this, put a light card into our soul, and draw a card out of it, uh, has it replace itself, turns on, turns on Vestige for us, uh, overall pretty good. For the arms and legs, I think we're just going to be stuck with uh, uh, some of the generic uh, defensive uh, equipment. We don't really have anything for this, but uh, we'll get by with what we have. Uh, the feet would probably be Snapdragon Scalers, and uh, that would probably be it. So there it is. There's our, our deck for Riskurum. Uh, and uh, I think it, it could be bring an interesting play style. I don't think it would be necessarily uh, competitive in a one-to-one -one match, but I think he could be uh, a lot of fun in, um, he could be interesting to play in, um, a, uh, in a PvE kind of setting, uh, or even in an ultimate pit fight. I think that uh, he has a lot of defensive abilities, and uh, he's going to pretty much keep his guard up. But uh, he does have some politics he can play. He can send arcane damage at somebody. He can send uh, healing at somebody. And that split kind of, uh, I think, makes him a very interesting character. And uh, I'd, I'd like to see more characters like this that, uh, I, again, don't necessarily have the power level in, uh, in competitive uh, fab, but could be fun to play otherwise. So, what do you think? Uh, let me know. S leave a comment below. Uh, spread the word about this. Uh, if you like this character and, and his weapon, uh, you can go to the link on my Instagram and like that. Uh, there's, uh, there is a prize for the most likes uh, on a card that's made. Or if you see other characters, take a look at the, the hashtag Fab Everfest and go through the other uh, cards that people have made. There, there have been some excellent uh, created cards 
uh, take a look on, uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter uh, for all the different cards that people have made. Uh, so until next time, thanks for stopping by.